Hey guys, today we are going to look at factoring perfect square trinomials. We're going to answer the question, what is a perfect square trinomial and how do I factor perfect square trinomials? So let's first look at where perfect square trinomials come from. Um, I have x plus 10 squared. Remember, this is the same thing as x plus 10 times x plus 10. So I can use FOIL to simplify this. So first times the first is x squared, outer times the outer is 10x, inner times inner is also 10x, and then last times the last 10 times 10 is 100. So then when I combine like terms, I get x squared plus 20x after I combine 10x and 10x plus 100. Okay, let's look at the next group. Remember, this is the same thing whenever we square. It's the same thing as 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. So I can use FOIL to multiply this. So first times the first is 9x squared. Outer times outer is negative 6x. Inner times inner is negative 6x. And then last times the last is positive 4. So then when I combine like terms, I end up getting 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. So let's see if we can recognize any patterns here. So my first term in this group was x, and then I was left with x squared, and then the first term in this group was 3x, and the first term in my product was 9x squared. So it looks like the first term squared is how we get that first part of our product, if you just square that first term. Okay, now let's look at the middle term. For this middle term, I got 20x, and I got that from doing 10x plus 10x, and I got 10x from doing 10 times x. So I basically just did 10 times x two times. Let's see if I did the same thing here. I had negative 12x, which I got by doing negative 6x and negative 6x. And the way I got negative 6x, which was doing 3 times negative 2, 2 times. So that middle term is just the first term times the second term, 2 times. So we do the first term squared. And then for that middle term, we do 2 times the first times the second. We did two of the first term times the second term. And then let's see if we can figure out where the third term in the trinomial comes from. I got 100, and the way I did 100 was by doing 10 times 10, or just 10 squared. I got four, and the way I did that was by doing two times two, or two squared. So that third term in our trinomial is just the second term squared. So that is a perfect square trinomial because when you factor it, you end up getting a perfect square. And those patterns are summarized down here. If you have a perfect square trinomial with perfect squares and then two times the first times the second, it can be factored into this. So here are the steps to factor this pattern. You can all, remember you always need to check for your GCF first and then make sure that it's actually a perfect square trinomial. The first and the last terms are gonna be perfect squares and then the middle term will be twice the product of the square roots of the first and the last term. And we can use these rules below to factor. You can also use the other methods that we have learned for factoring trinomials, which is, I call it the X games. We can also use other factoring trinomials methods. So if these patterns make sense to you and you want to use them, go for it. But if they don't make sense to you and you want to keep using the X games, then you can do that too. I will show you both ways on here. But for now, on one through three, we're just going to determine, is this a perfect square trinomial? So if it's a perfect square trinomial, the first and the last term will be perfect squares and the middle term will be twice the product of the square roots of the first and the last term. So the first thing that we need to do 
is take the square root of the first term and the last term. Make sure that we can do that, which it looks like those are perfect squares. The square root of x squared is x, and then the square root of 64 is 8. So if it is a perfect square trinomial, then that means this middle term will be 2 times the first square root, which was x, times the second square root, which was 8. 2 times x is 2x, and 2x times 8 is 16x. So both the first and the last were perfect squares, and then that middle term was 2 times the first square root times the second square root. So is it a perfect square trinomial? Yes. Okay, let's check if number two is a perfect square trinomial. So I need to start by taking the square root of the first, which would be 4x, and the square root of this last, which would be 3. And then if it's a perfect square trinomial, this term is going to be 2 times the first square root times the second square root. 2 times 4 is 8x, 2 times 4x is 8x, and 8x times 3 is 24x. So my first two terms were square roots, but this last term did not meet that criteria. So no, this is not a perfect square trinomial. Okay, let's look at the last one like this. I'm going to start by taking the square root of 9x squared which is 3x, and then the square root of 1 is 1. So if this is a perfect square trinomial, then this middle term will be 2 times the first square root, 3x, times the second square root of 1. 2 times 3x is 6x, and 6x times 1 is 6x. So it meets all the criteria. So yes, this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, now, 4 through 7, we are going to factor the perfect square trinomial. So you can use the normal methods that you use for factoring a trinomial, or if you want to try out these patterns, you can. I'm going to use these patterns on the first two, and then the last two, I will factor them using the normal methods for factoring a trinomial. So it told us that this is a perfect square trinomial, and I have a plus sign here, so it's going to follow this pattern. I just have to take the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and then make a binomial plus squared. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. So this will factor into x plus 5 squared. Okay, let's look at this next one. It told us it's a perfect square trinomial, so I can use this pattern up here. I'll just need to take the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and make my binomial a subtraction and square it, since I have a subtraction here. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x, and the square root of 121 is 11. So that means my factored form would be 2x minus 11 squared. Okay, let's look at number 6. So I had said I was going to use the normal x games method, but on this one my numbers are kind of large and there's no GCF. If I did 25 times 81, that would be a really big number. It might be hard to come up with the numbers that add to negative 90. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the perfect square trinomial pattern on this one. So I have a subtraction, and they told me it was a perfect square trinomial so I can use this pattern. So I'm going to take the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and then just make my binomial a subtraction. So the square root of 25x squared is 5x, and then the square root of 81 is 9. So my factored form would be 5x minus 9 squared. All right, let's look at number 7. So I could factor this with the perfect square trinomial pattern, but I'm going to try the normal method where I figure out what multiplies to a times c, um, just to show you that both ways work. But before I do that, I notice that there's a GCF here. All of these terms are divisible by 4. 
So let's go ahead and take out a GCF of four. And I'm left with four X squared plus 48 divided by four is 12. So 12 X and then 36 divided by four is nine. Okay, now I am going to factor this using the normal method. I'm gonna figure out what multiplies to four times nine. Four times nine is 36 and adds to 12. And that would be six and six. So I'm gonna break this 12X up into six X and six X. So this will be four times four X squared plus six X plus six X plus nine. Okay, now I'm going to factor these four terms by grouping. So I'm still gonna have my GCF of four, and then the GCF of four X squared plus six X is two X. So parentheses two X, and then four X squared divided by two X is two X, and six X divided by two X is three, plus the GCF of the second group is three, and then I'm left with 2x plus 3. So now I can factor out the common binomial. And I'm left with 4 times 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. And then I can just simplify this by writing that as 2x plus 3 squared. So the final answer would be 4 times 2x plus 3 squared. So you can use the normal methods to factor your perfect square trinomial. Just make sure that you write it as a binomial squared for your final answer. Okay, let's look at number eight. It says solve the equation, so I need to use the zero product property. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that the equation is set equal to zero, which it is. And then the second step I need to factor. Okay, I am going to just use the normal method here to factor trinomials because they did not tell me if it was a perfect square trinomial or not. So I need to figure out what multiplies to 25 times 4, which is 100, and adds to 20. And that would be 10 and 10. So I can break down my 20x into 10x and 10x. So this would be 25x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 4 equals 1 or equals 0. Okay, now I can factor by grouping the GCF of 25x squared plus 10x would be 5x. And then I'm left with 25x squared divided by 5x is 5x and 10x divided by 5x is 2. And then the GCF of 10x plus 4 is 2. 10x divided by 2 is 5x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then I can factor out the common binomial, and it is 5x plus 2 times 5x plus 2. So I have two of the same binomials, so I can write this as 5x plus 2 squared. So remember the last step in zero product property is to set each factor equal to zero. I only have, I do have two factors, but they're the same exact thing. So I just have to set it equal to zero once. So I'm going to set 5x minus 2 equal to zero, and that will tell me or 5x plus 2 equal to 0, and that will tell me what my 1 solution is. So I would subtract 2 and get 5x equals negative 2, and then divide by 5, and I get that x equals negative 2 fifths. And then if you wanted to write it with the curly brackets, you can, but you don't really have to since it's just one solution. All right, let's look at the last one. 4x squared minus 28x equals negative 49. So I am going to set this equal to zero first. 
since that is the first step in the zero product property. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides. And I get 4x squared minus 28x plus 49 equals zero. Okay, then the second step is to factor. So I could factor with the x since this is a trinomial, but I noticed that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square, so I'm going to see if it's a perfect square trinomial and then factor it that way. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x and the square root of 49 is 7. So if this is a perfect square trinomial, this will be 2 times 2x times 7. 2 times 2x is 4x, and 4x times 7 is 28x. So this is a perfect square trinomial, so I can use this pattern, since there was a subtraction sign, to factor it. I already found the square root of the first and the second. I just need to stick them in a binomial and make it a subtraction. So it will be... 2x, since that was the first square root, minus 7, since that was the second square root squared, equals 0. So remember, we're solving this equation. We set it equal to 0. We factored, and now we need to set each factor equal to 0. There is only one fact. Well, there's two factors, but they're the same exact factor of 2x minus 7, so I just need to set 2x minus 7 equal to 0. So I'm going to add 7, and I get 2x equals 7, and then divide by 2, so x equals 7 halves. 